So for round four, we have Ethan Kiss versus Charlie Chan. So, this, yes, round four, game one from Tristan's uh, beautiful hands. <laughs> These two players are both uh, undefeated at this point. And uh, rolling a one? I did not see who rolled one. I saw six and then I saw six. Six and a one? Oh, Ethan is choosing to go second right now. So th this is a Monarch Mirror match. I believe both players do not have an extra deck as you can see on this beautiful mat. No extra deck. No tokens. <laughs> no tokens, no tokens. Uh, both players undefeated. Well, in this case, Charlie starting off going pretty strong with the idea play with no effect failure to counter this play. So he will be getting the Eidos out of the deck. A cut. That's actually a very good start. Uh, he has a Kuraz in hand from what I can see. I guess he's tributing one for the Kuraz. And he's going for the drawing play, so popping both to draw two cards. I think he drew into a Pantheism right there, so he's going to continue his draw engine right there. I wish I had the liberty to do that. What is he going to set? It has a Twin Twister as well. Sets one, passes turn. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Monarchs tend to gain a lot of advantage in one turn. Now I see Emergency Teleport, a March in Ethan's hand, starting with E-Telly. e, -Telly. e -Telly goes through, so I'm guessing Ethan is playing the the, uh, the Super Quantum build. Here comes Blue Lair. Effect of Blue Lair to search the Red Lair. Well, I guess uh, he won't be dead drawing that Blue Lair for this game. That's a pretty yeah. <laughs> I'm really lucky. I, you don't want to see Blue Lair if you're going to be playing this. You want to e Telly it out for sure. It's uh, like he's a tricky deck. It just leaves more opportunity for this. Yeah, so that's why some people don't choose to run the uh, the Super Quantum side. So, like, Tribute 1. Oh, those are Vanity Speed. That's a very wow. interesting play. Uh, it does. <laughs> wow. And a March, so he's protecting it. I, unfortunately, this still can be broken by one quick Storm Force. Attacks for 24. 24. Goes through successful damage. That's pretty good, but this does stun the monarch player. Well, the other monarch player, Charlie, a little bit because he can't use his idea right now. So he is down to using Stormforth to get rid of this guy. Of course, Stormforth is a searchable card after all. Stormforth is the main card in the match after all. <laughs> yeah, Stormforth. Stormforth control wins the mirror match. Now, no one's going to be getting any kind of advantage. Uh, because of um, <laughs> no extra deck. Oh, uh, Charlie setting one card. Oh my god, don't shuffle your hand like that, Ethan. No, oh, don't shuffle. Oh, Stormforth. <laughs> that is not good. See, as we just spoke, Stormforth is what controls the game. He summoned out a Super Quantum Red Lair. So that's 2000 and another 24. If it goes through. And he's taking both! Charlie is almost well. dead. Monarch mirror matches. This is a little more one-sided than I thought. I've seen that how Charlie kind of opened with an idea. Now there's an Aether in hand. Oh, he, I see I see a, a grudge. I see that. Tenacity. The tenacity is going to be a Stormforth play. It doesn't target, so March does nothing in this matchup except for blocking Caius. Oh, so he reveals the uh, the Ether. Ether is going to be... Let's guess Stormforth. Yeah. Ethan, both... Ethan's feeling a little pressure right now. Now, both <laughs> monsters on Ethan's side is uh, Tribute Summon, so Ether only needs to tribute one of them off, and preferably tributing off the Vanity Spin to get Ether's effect going. That's right, and then he can use up his uh, cute little mini Monarchs as well. Oh yeah, the mini Monarchs will be coming <laughs> back as well. And this, like, that's actually very scary. There's a potential for an OTK here too. As long as Charlie has, oh, going for the Twin Twister, like killing off a warning or something will be worth it at this point. Double top, which is the Twin Twister. I guess that was not necessary. Oh, there was a okay, there was that warning that we just spoke of. Oh, oh, oh Stormforth is. Uh, here we go. Tribute Vanity Screen. So which monarch do you think he's gonna bring out? <laughs> 
the another at the same. So he has to send two. Okay, there's the Prime Monarch. Of course, <laughs> Pantheism. Of course, of course. Beautiful play. Beautiful. Oh, yes. <laughs> Such a beautiful play. Never seen this play ever in my life. No, so beautiful. So he summons the second uh, Aether out of the deck, which is a very smart play. That's a card you should technically go for, because even if it goes back to your hand, it's still live during your opponent's turn. So dangerous to live Now, here's the funny thing. Is this an OTK? Because he still has the idea idea in the uh, graveyard to summon with the Eidos to give him an additional normal summon, which right. could potentially kill the red layer if it's an Arebus. I think he's cycling through a solution. So yeah, Pantheism going for Stormforth. Uh, I think Charlie specifically chose to get that uh, Prime Monarch to his hand. I think he has the ability to ditch it. So there's the... Uh... Oh, the BOS! <laughs> what?! <Yeah. laughs> Okay, that's a that play I, I've never seen before. There's the play I've so, never seen. Yeah, before. the attack, I believe this is for game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Charlie takes game one with a BLS. Wow, I, I, I seriously thought he was just gonna go with the uh, Monarch play. So we're gonna go to game two now. Uh, were, you, were you a bit surprised? I. yes. <laughs> to the extent that I have nothing else to say. That. I was I was a little dumbfounded by that. Was that was uncalled for? Who runs BLS and Monarchs? But they are all light and darks. Mm -hmm. as long as it, count. <laughs> it certainly did make Charlie look good. And Charlie hasn't like a little history about Charlie is he was a very high level player uh, back in the day. He quit for a while and now he's back. But he's decided to use the the cheapest deck he could get his hands on to play. <laughs> so they Exciting. maxed out the rarity. Oh well. <laughs> well, so not exactly the cheapest. All right, so who's going first? Ethan's going first this round, and he opened with a Max C. This is strange. Most people usually side out Max C's, but Max C's, used in the right context, is very good. Now I see a Chaos Trap hole uh, side in, uh, from, in Charlie's hand. Maybe he mains them. We can check his deck profile later <laughs> in the other video. So uh, there it is, the t tenacity. Oh, mistaken arrest. He does is not that? get to search. It's like Ethan. a mistake. Quick, quick. Ethan. <laughs> That's pretty smart that he immediately uh, one for one the uh, the grudge or the tenacity, or I should say. Uh, that could potentially brick hands. You know, you need every single combo piece in a monarch deck, and by stunning out a tenacity, you did not get your search. Now, Charlie has a very mediocre turn looking at what he's doing now. The first turn, uh, the first turns are so important for a mana to get the Oh, he set a Max C in tribute for a Majesty's Fiend! Attacks for 24 with a Majesty's Fiend? Oh my goodness, wow. What is this? This is like a very unprecedented Monarch <laughs> match I've seen. Like, I've, I've played Monarch Mirrors, they usually like, grind out like, primes and whatnot. Okay, Dark Hole. Dark Hole killing off the, uh, Majesty's Fiend. Good, good. This time there's no, um... Uh, there's no march of the monarchs blocking the way. <laughs> there's a chaos trap will set, so I don't think Ethan can make very much of any turn right now. Except that Ethan also has a twin twister in his hand. But if he uses the twin twister, he will lose his entire hand. It's definitely not worth it. Passes his turn. There's an Eidos in his hand. Oh, Charlie's hand, on the other hand, ha he has a storm forth. Eidos. Uh, kind of bricky on his side, too. Yes, the battle of the bricked monarchs. Okay, this looks like a monarch match. <laughs> oh, I just saw the draw. Oh. It's a black ball. You know what the black ball is? Is that the... No! Yeah, 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 yeah it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it's the Wicked Avatar. Would. Of course he would. Oh. If he lands the Wicked Avatar, Charlie would probably lose. He's I can't... I can, okay, so he's got a one-for-one, one too. Does Charlie have that monarch that he needs? So he ditches the, uh, the Erebus. Erebus is probably one of the best ditches because you can always put him back in your hand. Idea? Idea effect? Oh. Edo's effect. Successful. So in other words, Charlie for this turn has one extra tree it summoned for the turn. Passes the deck, gets the cut. I don't know, I think I think Edo's feeling a little bit pressured. That dark hole definitely set him back, but the mistaken rest definitely screwed over Charlie a bit too. So it was a bit of a trade in terms of bricking each other. Or Erebus number two, here we go. Effect goes through. Um, 
I don't know what I want to say. It's. It's gonna be the typical two. Now, is he gonna go for the hand or is he gonna go for the? Uh, Oh, he's yeah. going for the hand. He's going for the hand. He wants to get a die. He wants to get a die to roll for it. Come on, Charlie. You should have a die. Do you have to? Do you have to roll it? You technically do not have to roll it. You just have to confirm it's random. But some people argue you have to. I'd say, in the judge's perspective, no, you don't. Ethan shouldn't shuffle like that. You can see like every card. <laughs> I can see every card. I'm on. I'm on. I'm like top view camera. Well, that's. It's easier to see. Cards. But he tilted it. But he only has a wicked avatar, so he took away his Edo, so that's even worse. Yeah, but uh, I don't have the Edo. So Charlie's gonna go with the Pantheism reveal three to you know the banish from grave effect. Of course, of course. <laughs> He's actually giving him a choice. I think there's no real choice. I think all of them are like gonna result in the same play. Either he has another Pantheism in hand. So he gives him the Prime Monarch. Now Charlie told me that he always wants at least one Prime live so he can get extra draws per turn. It's true, it's true. You always have the choice as well, so it's... But then if he has a Pantheism, he's just gonna ditch it anyway. It's good either way. I guess in a sided game, you might have more traps, so you can... Well, but then again, he only has one back row, so... So he's attacking for uh, 28. Monarchs, Monarchs usually lands about three hits and it's game over. Like, why am I even tracking life at this point? These monarchs. Hey, you never know. They might have some weird situation where, like, an Eidos is trying to beat the kids. Oh, he's walling up, even though he knows he's not going to get the summoning from the uh, idea. Hmm. I guess it doesn't matter. He guess he oh, yeah, he does have another Eidos in hand, so I guess that can't count. Yeah. Counts for it. I guess it's a smart thing to wall up because you know you never know when you can get OTK'd by by a monarch player. And knowing that it's a Stormforth matchup, you just you don't want to lose like the one monster. You still need your chump blocks for sure. And Prime is one card that Prime control is also very important. Now Ethan clearly he's under the brick. Like maybe he'll get a discount for some furniture at the brick because <laughs> he's totally representing right now. Any, like, one big black ball. <laughs> yeah, the black ball. It's Gantz. If anyone reads like, the Gantz. Oh, got some warning. However, that still costs him 2,000 life points. Hmm. Well, he already took 28 from the Erebus. So he's like down 48. Of course, he adds a pantheism back from the idea that he tributed out. Uh, I don't think he needs to do that much more damage. He's dead. Erebus effect, which is the pantheism. Gotta put him back in his hand and use his pantheism effect. Tenacity, tenacity. Okay, this time there's no choice. There is no choice in this one. Oh, Escalation. Escalation is also very good in the mirror match, getting that extra tribute summon for any of your monarchs. Air like using Erebus on your opponent's turn is quite deadly. Very stunning play. Does not target. Ruins plays paired with a Stormforth. That's pretty deadly. It's a really sick play. Can so, you just imagine the fear of them like having a Kaios? Yeah, he was going to get the Escalation anyway. He let, you let him thin out the deck, but then, then again, it did like, using up... Um, the tenacity uh, eventually will not give you the choice that you want anymore because you burn it all out. You're like, okay, now you actually get to choose here. It might be a long choice. So he attacks for 28. 400. So he is short a little. Why didn't he just summon? Oh, he did use the summon already. He's gonna go with escalation, passing priority. Yeah, he passed priority, entered main phase, uh, gets another Erebus out. And shuffles on the way a wing card. Is the Avatar? Yeah, I'd be a little skeptical if someone's shuffling like that. But those are such nice things. PC metallic blue. They are nice. They are very pretty. And it's game, he concedes. I concede! Ethan Kiss takes his first loss in the tournament. 
in the Monarch Mirror match. It was a very bricky Monarch Mirror match, come to think about it. Yeah, but I mean, Monarchs. Monarchs, yeah. <laughs> well, if you guys like this game and want to see more coming up for the next round, don't forget to subscribe to MST.TV. If you like our commentary, our duo commentary, please hit the like button. And as always, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV. <laughs>